Sealant placement should take place directly after crack cleaning. Placement equipment must follow cleaning equipment as closely as possible. For larger cracks, it may be necessary to place sand or backer rods in the cracks to prevent the sealant from running too deeply into the crack. It also prevents the formation of a three-sided bond, confining the bond to the side walls of the crack. Sealant can be placed in the crack in several configurations. In the flush fill method, the sealant is placed into the uncut crack and the excess sealant is struck off. Sealant level should be kept even with the pavement surface. This method is most commonly applied in the use of cold pour sealants. The reservoir configuration requires routing of the crack. After being routed, the material is placed in the crack channel or reservoir. The finished seal is either flush or recessed, meaning slightly below the pavement surface. In the Band-Aid configuration, the sealant is placed into and over the uncut crack so that the seal covers the crack and a portion of the pavement on either side. Regardless of the final configuration, the sealant should be placed directly into or over the center of the crack. If sealant is not placed properly, it may be difficult to push material into the crack. If the sealant sinks into the crack, it should be reapplied until it is flush with the pavement surface. A U-shaped squeegee, either metal or rubber, is used for finishing and shaping. The squeegee must be kept over the center of the crack. Also, keep the squeegee as close as possible to the applicator wand so that sealant is fluid and workable. The finished band should not exceed a width of three inches or a height of one-eighth of an inch above the pavement surface. Also, sealant should not be mounded up over the crack. If it is necessary to seal wide areas, aggregate must be placed on the fresh sealant to maintain skid resistance. Keep traffic off of the sealant until it has cured and is tack-free. If vehicle tires will contact the sealant before it is cured, the seal may need to be blotted. Blotting is the process of applying fine aggregate or sand to the non-cured sealant to prevent tracking. Blotter should be applied immediately after the material is placed so that it adheres and serves its purpose. After crack sealing has been completed, follow the manufacturer's recommendations for cleaning and maintaining all equipment. Cold pour sealants are crack sealants which are applied in ambient field temperatures. Unlike hot pour sealants, they normally do not require heating. The most commonly used cold pour sealant is polymer modified asphalt emulsion crack sealer. In emulsified asphalt, asphalt particles are dispersed in water with the aid of an emulsifying agent. Cold applied emulsified asphalt sets by evaporation of water when exposed to air. Cold pour sealant should not be applied when air temperature is below 50 degrees Fahrenheit and falling, but may be applied when the air temperature is above 40 degrees and rising. Air temperature should be measured in the shade and away from artificial heat. Routing should not be necessary for cold pour because the sealant has low viscosity and will easily penetrate the crack. Cold pour sealant should be applied using a barrel pump or pressurizing system to provide a continuous and uninterrupted flow of sealant through the hose to the wand. The wand applicator should have an appropriate nozzle for applying the material in the crack. A rubber U-shaped squeegee follows the wand or applicator closely to push the sealant into the crack and minimize the amount of material on the surface. Curing time for cold pour sealant can vary from 30 minutes to several hours depending on the humidity and temperature. If vehicle tires will contact the sealant before it is cured, the seal may need to be blotted.
Hot pour rubber asphalt crack sealers are sealants which are heated to high temperatures in preparation for application. The hot applied materials then harden as they cool. Hot pour material usually consists of asphalt cement with the addition of a modifier. Recycled tire rubber is the simplest and most common modifier in rubber asphalt crack sealer. The addition of rubber gives the asphalt desirable properties, such as high elasticity and high melting point. Hot pour materials should not be applied when the cracks or pavement surfaces are moist or damp. The sealant is melted in a double jacketed heater using heat transfer oil so that no direct flame comes in contact with the shell of the vessel containing the sealant. The heated reservoir should be equipped with an agitator to ensure the sealant is circulated during the heating process. This will achieve a uniform temperature rise and maintain the desired temperature. The temperature of the vessel contents should be accurately monitored to avoid overheating the material. Make sure the material is heated and maintained between 350 to 375 degrees Fahrenheit with a maximum of 400 degrees unless otherwise specified by the sealant manufacturer. The heater should be equipped with a gear-driven asphalt pump with adequate pressure to dispense the sealant. Material is pumped through hoses connected to wands with nozzles appropriate for applying the material inside the crack. The temperature of the material in the hose must be monitored to optimize performance. It should be maintained within the manufacturer's guidelines. Once the material reaches its specified application temperature and the first several cracks have been cleaned, hot pour placement may begin. When finishing hot pour seals, a metal U-shaped squeegee should be used. It is critical that squeegee work be completed immediately after placement so the sealant does not have time to cool and harden. If bubbling occurs, there is still moisture in the cracks and work must be postponed until they are dry. In most cases, hot pour sealant will cure in about 15 to 30 minutes.